condemns false teachers. Okay, and he he says here. Uh, That you put those to the test who call themselves apostles and, uh, and you condemn them. How often do we in our church today accept false teachers? Just the, the world is, the Christian world is swimming with false teachers today. Just all over. And we want to have this attitude where we tolerate it. And it's easier to tolerate it than to speak out against it. I was on YouTube again. The other day, you know, I have to say there's a wealth of information on YouTube. Some of it's just total garbage, but people have really produced great stuff and posted it on there. And there was a video of a guy standing outside of Joel Olstein's church preaching the gospel as people were leaving. And you know why? Because that guy realizes that Joel Olstein is a false teacher. And then you have Kenneth Copeland and Benny Hinn. And uh, what's his name? Peter Popoff. Right? And we tolerate it to the point where Peter Popoff was caught red-handed in his, in his, in his uh, scam miracle services where someone would come up to him and he'd say, your name is Barb, aren't you? You're suffering from um, blood poisoning, aren't you? And then he have a microphone in his ear because before the service is everyone filled out a thing saying what their name was and what was wrong and his wife was in the back of the church with a microphone and he was and he was and she was reading to him okay her name is Barb and she has a blood infection and they actually a news team actually like set up a receiver and was actually recording her doing this and he was out of the limelight for I don't know what was it, about five years, then he came back, and now there he is again, doing his same old stuff. Now, if they were playing games with just uh, fringe stuff of Christianity, okay, maybe, you know, we should look the other way. But a lot of these false teachers actually go to the heart of Christianity and the heart of the gospel. When Kenneth Copeland teaches that God is a man and he stands about six foot three inches tall, or whatever he says, and he's a physical human being, and people who believe in this spirit God that fills up the universe or is crazy and stuff. It's like sometimes they get to the heart of the gospel. And the main thing that all these false teachers play games with is the actual gospel of how a person gets saved. When Joel Olstein gets on television and he says, well, Mormonism's okay, and, and, uh, and he preaches about how to live a good life instead of how to get saved. Let me tell you something, I would rather live a crummy life and be saved than to be the richest man in the world and go into an eternity and be separated from God for eternity. So it makes you think, should we be to tolerating these false teachers the way that we do in the church? The Nicolaitans, there is no record of who the Nicolaitans were. You know, we just have no record of what their teachings were and what they... Uh, and why Jesus would bring them up in this letter. But the Greek word means ruler of the people. Okay? Now, that makes some people think that they were a group of Christians that were starting a clergy within the church. That they were separating the laity from the clergy that had to be looked up to and followed and and, uh, and were better than the rest of the laity. Okay? That's why I won't, no matter how long I'm a pastor, I will never wear a robe. Okay, if some of you want to wear a robe, that's okay, but a robe to me separates the, the pastor from the congregation. It makes you think that somehow we're better than you, that we know more than you. Well, I probably do more, know more than you on several subjects. But, uh, and I should probably know more about than you about theology because I'm the one who's supposed to be teaching, teaching you. But it is the responsibility of each and every one of you to know Scripture for yourself, to study Scripture for yourself. Because let me tell you something, I could get up here and tell you something that's wrong. And if I'm the guy in the role that has all the authority, you're just going to buy into it because you don't know any better. 
See what I'm saying? Now we can't be sure about that. We can't be sure because there's no record of who the Nicolaitans were, but it's one an, an interpretation by what their name actually means in Greek. They have lost their first love. This is the second generation of Christians. Okay? Uh, when the church started, now you have, now it's about 30 years later, 30, 35 years later, and you have a new second generation of Christians coming in. How easy it is to lose your first love. Who's, who is our first love, by the way? Sharon. Well, I hate to tell you this. It should be... I hate to tell you this, but it should be Jesus. It shouldn't be anything else. And let me tell you, I, this verse really hit home to me when I read it again because I remember when I first got saved, I was out there like a force fire just telling people about Jesus and what he did for me. And I look back on it now, and man, people must have, some people must have really thought I was crazy. But you know what? I saw people getting saved left and right just because I was telling them about Jesus. And now it is so easy just to fit in, whether it's at work or with unsafe friends. It's so easy just to fit in, try to make people like you. No, but it doesn't even work. No matter how much I try to fit in, people still don't like me. I wonder what that problem is. But, and why is that? Because we lose our first love. You know, when Sharon and I first met, it was like, ooh, man, that's all I can think about. My dad and my sister were going on uh, flo to Florida for a week, for two weeks. And uh, I came, and I was supposed to go with them, and my dad was paying for everything. And I was like, you know, I think I'd rather stay here. Why? Well, I met this girl, and I don't want to leave right now for two weeks. I'd rather be with her. <laughs> two weeks in Disney World. But why is that? Because every uh, feelings and emotions I've, I had for Sharon were so intense that I didn't want to even think about anything else. And that's how Jesus wants us to view him. We, he wants to be the center of our lives, or the center of, our, of attraction for us. He wants to be that first love. And it's so easy to put him by the wayside when we have other things to do. The exhortation, their urge to remember their first love, repent and return to it, or they will have the removal of their candlestick, the removal of their witness. You'll become even more ineffective if you continue to look towards other things. You become more ineffective in your witness to other people. When I do something at work, I don't know how many times I've been told, and you call yourself a Christian. <laughs> you know, a harmless little joke I make or a little comment, they're ready to jump right on that. And in a way, I lose my witness, right? It's hard being perfect like me. It's hard always being put up on that pedestal. And let me tell you something, it's like that, it should be like that for all of you. But, you know, I'm the kind that when someone's setting themselves up for a joke, I just can't hold my tongue. i got to, like, give them the zinger. You know what I mean? I just have to. And I, it's something I should, like, not do because it does hurt my witness, honestly. The promise is they're sharing in the tree of life. The tree of life at the end of Revelation that will, like, that if we... If we do what Jesus tells us to do, that we'll have a share in the tree of life. That was one church. That wasn't too bad, was it? <laughs>